live. Okay, so the review, and I'm going to do as many of these as I can. Um, I know we're going to run out of time, but all six, all six, okay, we know sine. Here's theta. Here's my opposite, my adjacent, and my hypotenuse, right? Sine is opposite of hypotenuse. Therefore, my answer is 3 over 5. That's all you have to write is just the fraction because we're looking for ratios. Boom, done. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we know that's going to be 4 over 5, right? Boom, that's all you got to put. Easy, huh? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So 3 over 4. Am I going too fast? Slow down for a second. Yes? Cosecant is just the reciprocal sign. It's the hypotenuse over the opposite. So it's just going to be 5 over 3. Secant is just the reciprocal of cosine. So it's just going to be 5 over 4. And cotangent is just the reciprocal of tangent. So it's just going to be 4 over 3. All right. Easiest six questions. You guys agree? Boom, you're done. Okay, so um, question number three. I don't want to do all of it because I'm going to run out of time, but if I want to, and I'm not going to ask all of it. So let's say I want angle B. Let's just find angle B, okay? Let's find angle B, okay? Now, in your notes, and you can use your notes, but in your notes, if you have a pair of opposites, which I do, let me change that. I don't want B. Let's say angle C, my bad. Angle C. Ha, okay, angle C, because I have my ops, right? I can find angle C because I have a pair of opposites. You guys see that? Ops, opposites, opposites, opposites. So we'll set up the law of sines. We'll go sine of C over 19 equals sine of 44 over 15, right? I will cross, multiply, and I'll go, okay, sine of C is equal to 19 sine of 44, use my calculator, divided by 15, use your calculator, I go 19 sine 44 divided by 15, and I get a decimal, like I should. I'll sign inverse that answer. And I get an answer of about 61.6 degrees. Okay. And then if I needed angle B, I just subtract from 180, right? You guys got that? Okay, now the area of triangle ABC. Well, um, I have angle C now. I probably need angle B to get this. You guys agree? To get the area of this triangle, let me go. So probably need angle B, actually. I do need angle B to get the area. So I'm going to find angle B, 180 minus my 44 plus my 61.6. All right. If I get going too fast, will you guys stop me? <coughs> I'm just trying to get it done before the bell rings. So angle B is 70, I'm going to put that up here, is 74.4. Okay, there's my 74.4, okay. And then we learned that the area of a triangle is one half adjacent times my other adjacent times the sine of my angle. Well, I've got adjacent adjacent in my angle, right? I have to have side angle side, so I'm going to use adjacent adjacent in my angle. So we're going to go ahead and go for an answer of one half. We're going to go 19 times 15 times the sine of 74.4. And let me use my calculator. 0.5 times 19 times 15 times the sine of 74.4, and I get about 
25. Centimeters squared. Okay, how's that? Am I doing okay? All right, on number five, same thing on five. I'm not going to ask you to solve the entire triangle. We just don't have time for that with only 42 minutes. But let's see if we can find angle Y, okay? Let's find, find the measure of angle Y, okay? All right. Do not have a pair of opposites. Do not have pairs. But if you look in your notes, in your notes there's a place where it says, if you know side, 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 there's somewhere in your notes that says, if you know side, 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 you can find an angle by the law of cosines. And I'm going to say it, and I'm going to write it, but the law of cosines say that you're going to have cosine of your angle, which is angle Y, equals parentheses. I know I emphasize those parentheses. It's going to be adjacent squared plus the other adjacent squared minus the opposite squared parentheses divided by parentheses. Kind of annoying, aren't I? I can't help myself sometimes. Um, two, because that's part of the formula. Part of the formula is two times the adjacent times the other adjacent parentheses. Okay, now I'm hoping I get a decimal. I should, because I'm going to cosine inverse that. So let's see what I get. Parentheses are super important with my calculator. So I'm going to go parentheses 20 squared plus 18 squared minus 21 squared parentheses divided by parentheses 2 times 20 times 18. And I get an answer. Now I figured I knew I was going to get a decimal because I got to take the cosine inverse of that answer. Okay. You guys are going to um, use my calculus tomorrow, right? Because I don't want anybody using their phones. It's too easy to take pictures, right? Oh, that's a cosine inverse, sorry. Cosine inverse. If And I get an answer of about 66.85 as an answer. Okay. How am I doing? Um, okay, in this one, for the measures of angles B, C, and the length of length of A, this must be B. It just didn't get copied off. Um, so we can probably move on. I don't need to do six. You guys can do six. We've already talked about law signs up here. So let's turn the page. Now let's look at our pentagon. And then after our pentagon, we can do our ship problem, and then we'll be done. And if you guys want to go back and finish up some things, you can, okay? Okay, number seven. It's a regular pentagon with side lengths of 22, okay? So if it's 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, right? Find the radius, okay? So let me draw in the radius of the circle. And let me keep drawing in more and more radii because I can make five congruent triangles. Well, let's superimpose one of these triangles. We've done this problem before. That's the good part about this. So if I superimpose that triangle, and I know this side is... 22, the central angle theta is 360 degrees divided by 5 because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 central angles. Am I going okay? Am I not going too fast? Thumbs up so far? So I get 72 degrees for theta, okay? So let me put 72 here. Now, if I know these other angles, that's going to help me. And I know that these two angles are equal because it is an isosceles triangle, R and R for radius, radius. Okay, so I'm going to go 180 minus that 72, and I'm going to get 108. And I'm going to divide that up over the two angles, okay? Divide it by 2, so I get 54 and 54. Okay, how am I doing? Can I'll wait for you, Ellie. So now let me superimpose this a little bit more 
so I got it's kind of sloppy, but I got 22, 54, 54, and 72, and R and R. Okay. Well, I have a pair of opposites, right? If I have a pair of opposites, then I can solve the triangle. So I've got a pair of opposites, and if I want to find the radius, I'll use a pair of opposites, and I'll set up then the law of sines. Okay, so I'll go then the sine, I'll go actually r over the sine of 54 equals 22 over the sine of 50 of, uh, sorry guys, 72, okay, I'm distracted today, hmm, I'll multiply this up and use my calculator, 22 times the sine of 54, close my parentheses, divide by sine of 72, close my parentheses, and I get an answer about 18.7, okay, so that's the radius, 18.7, I'm going to put that in here, 18.7, 18.7, okay? Now finally, the area. Okay, I've got adjacent, adjacent, and the angle, right? So what I'm going to use is this form here, okay? We're going to use that form for area. Use that form right there for area. So we're going to go one half the adjacent, which is 18.7 times the other adjacent, 18.7 times the sine of 72. And then I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 5, right? I'm also going to multiply by 5 because there's 5 triangles. Let's use my calculator. Okay, 0.5 times 18.7 times another 18.7 times the sine of 72, close my parentheses, times 5, and there it is, 831.4. That returns a centimeter squared, probably, okay? Yeah. So I get an area of 831.4 centimeters squared. How am I doing? Am I going slowly enough? No, I'll wait for you, Ellie. Don't let me go too fast, because it's not fair to you, is it? Guys, give me thumbs up when you're done, okay? Ellie, are you good? All right, everybody good? Okay, let's take a look at the last problem. Two ships leave port at the same time. Uh, northeast, southeast, so I'll probably put port down here because northeast, southeast. Both boi boats are going to look at their compass rows first. I'm going to put the compass rows in there. They're going to look at their compass to navigate. All right. So, ship A, a bearing of north 42 degrees east. Okay, so I got my compass, my protractor, I'm going 42 degrees east. 42 is right about there, okay? And nine knots, I just draw nine. That'll fit. Good, that'll fit. It's always nice when it fits. Ship A. Got to make sure I put in my numbers that I need. I've got 42 degrees here, and this length is 9. Okay? Ship B, let's see, ship B is going to go south, 18 towards the east, so I use my protractor, slash compass, and I'm going to look south, and then I'll go 18 degrees towards the east. That's that direction, okay, so I'm right about there. 18 degrees, and... I'm going to go seven knots, right? So I'm going to take and draw it seven. Right there. Should be. Okay, and 
this is 18 degrees and this is seven how am i doing so far i'll wait for you okay Um, they're going to go for four hours. So I'm going to multiply this by four and make this 36. Um, Abby, that's what you missed last time, right? See what I'm doing now? Yes. Multiply that by four and make this 28. But you got it. So then the distance apart, I'm just going to draw that in. So draw the distance apart. is going to be here from A to B. Call that C. Now I need some more information because I need the angle. So I'm gonna just gonna go 90 minus 42 gives me 48 for that angle, right? That angle's gotta be 48. And 90 minus 18, I get 72 because between north and east is 90 degrees, between east and south is 90 degrees. So then my central angle, which is 48 plus my 72, turns out to be 120 degrees. All right, I like that. How am I doing? I'll wait for you. So what we have really is side angle side. We don't have a pair of hours, but that's okay because we have a law of cosines. So I'm going to use the law of cosines. Okay. So we're going to go opposite squared, which is c squared, equals adjacent squared, 36 squared, plus the other adjacent squared, 28 squared, minus 2 times my adjacent, which is 36, times my other adjacent, which is 28, times the cosine of the angle, which is 120. Okay? All right, there I got it set up. While you guys are writing that down, I'm going to put down put it in my calculator. 36 squared plus 28 squared minus 2 times 36 times 28 times the cosine 120 and obviously that answer is way too big because we're going to take the square root of it, right? So I've got c squared equals 3,088, 3, 3, but that's just ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense for this problem because we have to take the square root. Square root, square root, right? Square root, that answer, and I get about an answer about 55.6. Now that seems reasonable, 55.6. Nuts. I'll wait for you. Okay, I'll wait for you. How am I doing? Okay, now the extra credit is not that hard. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you again for the third time how to do it, okay? Okay, so ship A is disabled. It's going to drop anchor. B's got to find it. So B's got to find the bearing. And when you're 55 miles or knots away and see, you cannot see it. You guys agree? You can't see it at all. So you've got to figure out where to go. So ship B has to rescue ship A, so they're going to look at their compass. They, but they need to know what bearings. So they look at their compass, and they realize that off of north, they really need to find, I'll highlight it, they really need to find this angle here. They find that angle there off of north. They'll just follow that angle. Okay. Call that theta. And we'll have it. So here's how it works. You need to see this. You need to see the parallel lines. So from geometry, and I don't know who he had for geometry or whatever, but Alternate interior angles, right? 18, 18 degrees. If I find angle B, I'll subtract 18, I'll have the theta, right? If I find all of angle B, subtract 18, I'll have my angle, okay? So to find angle B, we're just going to use the law of sines, because I have opposite. So I'm going to go sine of B over 36 equals 
sine of 120 over 55.6. To solve for B, I'm going to multiply that up and use my calculus. I'll go 36 times the sine, 120 divided by 55.6. I get a decimal. I kind of knew that, so I'll take the sine inverse of that, right? And I get angle B to be about 34.1 degrees. So I went sine inverse that answer and I got angle B is about 34.1 degrees okay all right great we got it now because we're gonna take then my 34.1 degrees and subtract it from the 18 and I get about 16.1 degrees for theta so I'm gonna say all right captain point north Turn your boat 16.1 degrees towards the east. We'll find our friends. All right, that's all I have. Um.